Bob Ross says there's no such thing as a mistake. It's just a happy accident. Well, if that's the case, then my garden is filled with happy little accidents. Join me today as I walk through my garden and show you what went wrong this year and what I'm going to learn from it. I think it's important to walk through your garden periodically to see what's going right and what's going wrong. What's going right, make note of so you can repeat it. But what's going wrong, well, stop. Take some time. Analyze it. Figure out why it went wrong. And then try to figure out how to improve it for the next gardening season. And right off the bat, one of the things that went wrong for me this year was this brand new metal bed. I really like gardening in raised beds. And for years, most of my raised beds were made out of wood. But this year, as I expanded my garden, I went ahead and built some metal beds and some concrete block beds because these materials will last much longer. I suspected that the temperature of the soil in this bed might be hotter. So I ran a test. I showed that in an earlier video and realized that the soil in the metal bed really wasn't any hotter than the soil in any of the other beds. That wasn't the problem. What I didn't anticipate was the reflective nature of this metal. That might explain why the soil inside wasn't hotter, because the sun would hit the metal and reflect off. And that's where the problem came in. Even though the soil temperature in this bed was comparable, that bounced sunlight was actually hitting all of the plants on the other side. Over here, the plants closest to this reflective energy really suffered. I grew tomato plants in this bed along with some green beans on the end. And the plants that were on this side, away from that reflective energy, did just fine. Now I had some weather struggles and a lot of the plants suffered from that, but as they were recovering, the small plants that had suffered some hail damage closest to that metal really never fully recovered. They seemed like they were burned. They had some damage and they did from all of that bounced light. They did help protect the plants on this side. So the plants on this side actually did much better. When it came to the little bit of harvest I had, the plants were all on this end and all on this side of this bed. So for the future, I've got to anticipate that and I have to figure out a solution. So I'm planning on painting that metal like I did with these metal beds. I had no adverse reaction from the plants around this metal bed because it was painted. A simple coating should be enough to limit, reduce, maybe even eliminate a lot of that reflective light and heat. It's going to be a big job, but that's the solution for a problem that I never anticipated. This problem developed relatively early in the gardening season and is very annoying. I just built this bed this year and filled it with soil, anticipating early planting. And within just a couple weeks, both of these boards began to warp and bow and created a gap of almost three inches between the boards. The soil began pouring out. So I had to move the soil aside and try to make a decision. Do I replace these boards, which would add extra expense, or do I put a barrier in place? So I took some roofing shingles that I already had, put them in just to keep the soil inside the bed. That's just a temporary fix. I'm going to have to replace these boards at some point. Brand new boards that only last a couple weeks before they're useless is terrible. So I'm making the most of it for now, but this is one of those issues you don't anticipate and why I'm moving to more permanent solutions in my raised beds. I had high hopes for the plants that were going to grow on this arch this year. And those plants included loofa gourds. Now, I've grown loofa gourds before and they take a long time. So in my short growing season, I started seeds indoors and then transplanted into this bed when the plants were of the right size. And within the first week, they were gone. Now, 
I was never able to figure out exactly what kind of pest ate my plants, whether it was insect or animal, but the plants were gone. I lost about a month of growing time because then I had to put seeds in the ground and those plants actually did pretty well until a disastrous cold snap killed them. But what I learned was that early in my season, there's some pest out there that likes to eat gourds. So when I retry this next year, I'm going to have to put individual protection around those young plants until they reach a size that they can have a full season to grow up this arch. This was the very first bed in my garden that I filled with soil as I was building last year. And in the bottom half, I used a hugoculture method, lots of branches and sticks, then covered all that with soil and organic material. And then the season was over. So I really didn't plant in it until this year. And because I knew it had all that organic material, I just started the seeds. Well, I didn't anticipate the dramatic drop in volume. I started with about two inches from the top of this bed. Now the soil level is closer to six inches from the top. That's a drop of almost four inches in a single season. I should have expected that. Those branches were gonna break down, the organic matter was gonna break down, but I should have added more organics at the beginning of the season to anticipate it. So rather than adding the normal two inches of compost that I like to do, now I've got to add four inches just to bring it up to where it was. And come spring, I'll probably have to add another couple inches just to keep the level where it should be. Anticipating that volume drop when you use a lot of organic material really should be part of your planning. I had a big choke cherry bush up by the house that I took out last year. And early this year, a number of volunteers were popping up from where that plant had been. So I dug up a number of them and then transplanted along this fence line, anticipating nice big choke cherry bushes for the birds and for me to make some delicious jelly. And I marked where I put them with these orange flags so that I wouldn't inadvertently step on them or mow over them. And then I went about building the garden and forgot all about these orange flags and these plants. So while I would have loved to have a long line of choke cherries, now I won't because they weren't tended, they weren't watered, they died, and they're gone. If you do this kind of thing, try to remember to water the plants. I have a bit of a gopher problem, but I know that. And so underneath all of my vegetable garden beds, I have hardware cloth and chicken wire to help keep the gophers from burrowing up into those beds. That's not the problem. This is the most active area in my yard for gophers. I'll often see the gophers working in this area, coming out of the burrows, gathering some of the plants and going back in. I should have anticipated that they could potentially damage this young apple tree that I planted right in the middle of their burrowing area. I didn't put any type of wire in place. I didn't think that they would damage this tree, but apparently they did. Looking at the wood and looking at the growth of the leaves later in the season, this tree was damaged. And there's no sign of disease. I took care of it like all the others, but I have to guess that it was the gophers that attacked this tree from underneath. There's still hope. I'm gonna wait till next spring to see how it recovers, if it recovers. But I'm already planning to have to replace this tree with another one and bury some of that wire underneath so that it doesn't happen again. As I mentioned earlier, I had some big problems with weather this year. Normally it's not that big of an issue because I have hoops and plastic that I can use to cover these raised beds pretty quickly. But this is a new bed, a new horizontal trellis that I hadn't used before. And I took a wait and see approach to it to determine how much damage the plants might get, if any. And what I discovered, especially in a hailstorm, they take a lot of damage. Well, now I have to figure out how to protect these plants. It's not just a simple hoop with plastic. So 
Right now I'm planning to put some crossbars as support across the top and then be ready to cover this whole area with big sheets of plastic draped from the top. I'm guessing that'll work. I'll try it next year, but that's a whole new type of protection that I've never used before. I'll wait and see if it works. Another big issue in this gardening season was time, or rather the lack of time. There were so many more beds that I wanted to build, so many structures I wanted to create, so many plants I wanted to grow. In fact, I had planned on growing those plants, but the seeds and the transplants never found their way into the beds. That's very typical for many of us gardeners. We plan, we often plan big, too big, and then it never happens. And every year, as I do a review of my garden, I realize time tends to be one of those factors that we think we have control over, but it actually has control over us. I'll still plan. I'll still anticipate the plants for next year. And next year, when I do another review of my garden, I'll probably be saying the same thing. I encourage you to do the same kind of thing. Go through your garden, identify what went wrong and what you need to fix it. Now, there were lots of more small things that happened in individual beds with little plants, but they're easy to correct. What I showed you in this video were some of the bigger things that I really have to deal with and plan for. And those are really the things that you need to identify. I think the fall is a good time to identify and do this kind of review because you've got many months to fix it before you're growing again in the spring. And to grow more in the spring and to see how I do my gardening, well, I encourage you to continue on your gardening journey and watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.